And what really fascinated me when I really started learning this is I said, I want to know the people that are successful in this, but not just the individuals. I want to know societies. If, if we're the society that lead, lives the shortest life, what are the societies that are living the longest life doing? And lo and behold, I came across the Blue Zones. And the Blue Zones was a study uh, by National Geographic and Dan Buettner. And they went and they looked around the world for the people that had the longest life expectancy that would live over 100. Now, who has the, the, the societies that have the most 100-year-olds? Now, I say that to people and they think, I don't want to live over 100 because our modern-day concept of 100 looks like this, right? But when he went to these places, their 100-year-olds don't look like this. They look like this. They're still active part of society. They're still the matriarchs and the patriarchs. They're still living very fulfilling lives, very happy lives. And it's interesting to look at these lives because when you look at the blue zones, and there were several blue zones around the world, and notice that one of them is in America, which is the most unhealthy country in the world. We'll get to that in a second. But when you look at these, the, these places, they don't have obesity, they don't have diabetes, they don't have heart disease, or if they do, it's very, very low. They... All of them, there's no, there's no me there. There's no physician that's treating obesity there. It just doesn't exist. And when you look at, at someone, so let's look at Okinawa, where they, where they have unbelievable longevity, or they did. It's getting worse over time. What are they eating mainly? Are they mainly eating protein? No. They're mainly eating yams, actually. If you look at their diet, it's very, very high in starches. 70% of it is yams. They call them emo. It's a purple yam. That's the vast majority of what they eat. They eat rice. They eat fruits. They eat vegetables. How much dairy and meat do they eat? I mean, look down there. About 1% of their calories comes from uh, those different things. The vast majority of their diet is a plant-based diet. They're not vegan or vegetarian. They don't have these names and concepts. It's just what they mainly eat. And if you look at them over time, a traditional Okinawan starts off low and actually loses weight as they get older compared to an American who gains weight. Now, you could see that the Okinawan diet is unfortunately changing, and because of that, so are their waistlines. And why is that? We're moving to Okinawa. And uh, it's a big problem um, because as they start adopting eye diet, they start getting our disease processes. Another um, blue zone is Sardinia. And in Sardinia, what are they eating? Well, they're eating lots of fruits and vegetables and grains. They eat bread, God forbid. You know, bread's a killer, right? Now, keep in mind, their grains are completely different than our grains. They're whole grains. They're not GMOs. They're grown in great soil. But still, they're eating a grain-based diet with lots of fruits and lots of vegetables. They're not eating a lot of meat, if at all. Um, and then in Loma Linda, California, we have the Seventh-day Adventists. Now, they're a fascinating group, okay? Very, very healthy group. Probably the healthiest of all the Blue Zones is Loma Linda. And if you've ever been to Loma Linda, it doesn't look that healthy. There's still McDonald's everywhere. But the reason is, is the Seventh-day Adventists, by religion, believe that, the, believes that the body is the temple of the soul and should therefore be treated with respect. So they don't drink and they don't smoke and they try to eat to be healthy and they follow somewhat the Daniel diet. And that comes from the Bible. If you guys know, Daniel was in captivity. He was off. This was the first prospective uh, trial where uh, the king uh, offered him um, wine and meat. And he said, no, he wants pulses and beans. And he said, put your guards on it and you'll see that they do better. So Daniel was the first nutritional scientist. But anyway, um, the Seventh-day Adventists, when you look at what, at what they do, um, they eat lots of fruits, they eat lots of vegetables, they walk a lot, and they're pretty healthy. Now, here's the fascinating thing. When you look at all these blue zones together and you do Venn diagrams, you could see that they all have their similarities and their differences. But if you look at the central part where we're looking at what do they do in common, they have a strong sense of family, they have a lot of social engagement, they get... They, they get exercise, but like I was talking about yesterday, they're not, there's no Gold's Gym in Okinawa that I know of. Uh, they're walking. They're just active. It's not like a, a, a physical, uh, a huge physical activity. And then they all follow, for the most part, a plant-based diet with lots of legumes. That's the things that hold them all together. Now, the, the Seventh-day Adventists make for the most unbelievable experiment that we could do because the Seventh-day Adventists had 60,000 900 people enroll in the Adventist Health Study 2. And before, they had an Adventist Health Study 1 that was 70,000 people. And they've been followed over many years. And here's the beauty of it. It's hard to, follow, to study a population, okay? Because if you're studying a population in Japan, they all have the same genetics. So is it genes? You always have to answer, is, is it genes? This is not the same genes. This is a heterogeneous group of people. 
When you're studying a big population, some people are smoking, some people are drinking, that could be affecting it. These people don't drink or smoke. Some people may be exercising, some people may not. These are all active people. But some of them eat some meat. They're not heavy meat eaters, but some of them eat some meat. And their meat eaters are much healthier than our usual meat eaters. So it, they're healthy, but they eat some meat. Some people will eat chicken, but not meat. Some people eat fish, but no meat. And then some people are vegetarian, but they'll eat eggs and, and dairy, and some people are vegan. So it's a great population to study. We could study these populations over many, many years. And what did they find? Well, one thing we found over and over again is that the vegans are by far the lowest weight. In fact, we consider a BMI of 25 to be a normal weight, and vegans were the only people that were under 25 on average, which is interesting. Vegans also had a really, really low rate of diabetes. Now, 7.5% for the meat eaters is pretty low com compared to the country, but still, in fact, when you look at it, and this is interesting, there's some hard concepts that I have to explain to you, but they use the odds ratios here. So you see the, see the vegan has half the risk of developing diabetes as a meat eater. But here's the thing, half the risk of one of those meat eaters. And the other thing they did is controlled for weight. When we're doing big studies like this, if weight is an independent cause of diabetes, we say, well, we gotta take out all the obese people. So th that data makes it look even less, uh, the data should be even stronger because if we put in obese people that were, we saw in the weight study, if we put obese people in here, that non-vegetarian group would have even more people that were diabetic. So very, very strong evidence. And no matter what the Adventist Health Study looks at, whether they look at heart disease, you can see the vegans do a lot better, whether they look at weight, whether they look at cancer. Uh, in this conclusion of the study, they said, the evidence that vegetarian diets or similar diets with reduced meat consumption may be associated with lower risk of death should be considered carefully by individuals as they make dietary choices and by those offering doctors those choices. Now.